No idea, I'm afraid, at this stage. But as we've moved to the other side of the tree... Hello, Spike. Spike, you want to know why she doesn't just go and get her cubs? Spike, I'm not convinced she knows where they are. I think that's probably one of the reasons. So I think I don't, you know, you see how she's called, first of all she turned around and she called to the other side. She turned 90 degrees from that and then called there. And then she turned around here 180 degrees from her original direction and started calling this side. Now that indicates to me that she's not quite sure where they are. I'm pretty sure that they can hear her. I'm also pretty sure that they're not coming out because they're not used to vehicles yet. And I think that, that as soon as we leave, or as soon as everyone leaves, there's a greater chance that they'll come out. So we'll sit here for a little bit longer. If she starts to call too much more, she might actually go and fetch them. Well, there we go. Let's find out what happens here. That's very nice. Beautiful. Now she's going to have a bit of a meal. Or a snooze. Yes, that looks like breakfast to me. Don't drop it, Tundi. That's still a heavy piece of prey for her, you know. Still looking, north and south. This is just wonderful. What a privilege it is to be spending this amount of time with her, because we don't often see her. Don't drop it. Oh, this is amazing. That thing weighs as much as she does, everybody, at least. In fact, probably more. Even though she's eaten quite a lot of it, it's still a big male impala. That is so impressive. Ideally we need to move, but unfortunately there's someone behind us, so we can't move right now. She has actually eaten a bit more than I thought she had. I think we should move quite quickly, don't you, Brian? Oh, hang on. Stay here. There we go. Beautiful shot. Beautiful. See, she's looking north and south, doesn't really know where to be calling. Strange that she's kind of repositioned it, maybe easier to eat where she is there, it's a bit more wedged in. But she definitely thinks that her baby should be coming to eat. Maybe she wants to lie on the dining room table, so she's... Now look, she's looking quite carefully down into one area. Oh, Sally, you say could the cubs climb that high? Sally, absolutely the cubs could climb that high with great ease. They'd have absolutely no problem at all climbing that high. 
They're adept climbers from about six weeks. I still think that they're behind that termite mound there. I also think that if they don't appear in the next five minutes, everyone, we're going to leave. Because I'm just a little bit worried that our presence here is having an effect on their arrival. She can't see them. There's no way she can see them, otherwise she wouldn't be calling all over the place. Yeah, Bobby, you're right, you know, you say she's got such amazing balance. It is astounding, isn't it? <laughs> How they don't fall out of these trees. Still calling. And I know you can't hear because of the wind, but she's just making that very kind of... Um, well, it's, it's, it's a half-hearted kind of saw. You know the sawing noise they make when they... You know the sawing noise they make when they call for territory? It's like the kind of beginning of that call, just a little... Ow, ow, ow. Not quite a chuff. The chuffing is a bit softer than that. Hello Justin, you say does Tundi have control of a territory? Yes, absolutely she does. She's got a territory, very well established territory, and her territory is next to that of her mother's and her sister's. So if you were to think of it as a sort of triangle with Karula at the top of the triangle, um, uh, Shadow would be down to the left hand side of the triangle and Tundi down to the right hand side of the triangle. Um, I I'd say it's probably roughly the same size as Karula's territory. Shadows tends to be a bit smaller than those two because she gets more pressure from unrelated leopards uh, to the north and to the south and indeed to the west of where she lives. But yes, she's very well established and most of her territory is in Torchwood and down into Chitwa Chitwa and into Cheetah Plains, a little bit on the western sides of Cheetah Plains. But after that, of course, she's replaced by Inkanyeni. And there she goes. Now let's just keep an eye on her. I'm not going to move from here. I'm going to try and be as still as possible. See if she doesn't go and pick up one of the cubs somewhere close by. Maybe in that thicket. Let's watch carefully. That's interesting. Maybe she spotted one there. I know you're getting a lot of wind in the microphone, everybody, but I'm a re it really is howling a gale out here. Let's just sit here for two minutes. I know we can't see her, but I think it's going to be worthwhile. She might bring those little ones out. I don't want to start the car and move towards her now, just in case she's going to fetch them. So I think we'll wait a few minutes here, and if she doesn't come back, then we'll probably just go home.